ladies, are you tired of watching videos where you're doing a countdown of the top hottest male singers, male actors, male sports icons, only to see a list of guys that you've never even heard of before? Or even worse, you're getting ready to watch a steamy list of good-looking guys to see a list of guys that are so young, they probably are younger than your grown children, and even worse, the same age as your grandchildren? Well, never worry again because I am creating for you the list of the top 10 hottest male rock stars of all time, Baby Boomer Edition. This is a list of my own personal favorites, so these are my opinion, but this is back when men still had testosterone and hair on their chest. So stay tuned because I'm going to give you the Living Legends version of the top hottest rock stars this evening, and in a couple of weeks I'm going to do another version of the top 10 hottest rock stars dead guys edition. So stay tuned. Top 10 hottest rock stars of all time. Before I get started, my name is Don Dickinson and the channel is Reflections and Insights for Life Over 55. The rock and roll icons in this video are my personal favorites, so this is kind of my opinion. If your favorite's not on there, don't be insulted. It's just that it's hard to pick only 10. So I am leaving the very best for last. This is not necessarily in order because one day I'll think this guy is the hottest and then a few days later I'll think, oh wait, what about that guy? So they kind of vary, but I am putting them probably my top ones first are going to be the, oh, this guy's hot, but the one at number three, two, one are the absolute first ones in my list. So stay tuned. You're going to want to watch it to the end. So number 10 on my list is kind of a two for one special because I'm talking about Bon Jovi. So I'm going to give John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora, I'm going to put them in my top 10 spot and not because they're any less of anything, but because they're two hot guys that were on stage at the same time and we get to enjoy as women watching the two of them strut around. So, um, John Bon Jovi, of course, had one of the cutest faces of rock and roll of all time. Those beautiful, long, wavy locks. The same thing with Richie Sambora, both of them on stage. Both of them are from Perth Amboy, New Jersey. So it's nice to have guys on the list who are American. Um, John Bon Jovi was born in March of 1962, and that makes him a Pisces. That is awesome. He is a Pisces. Richie Sambora, born in 1959. Both of these talented musicians are gorgeous. Um, Spin Magazine also revealed in 1988 edition that John Bon Jovi is actually a great nephew to the late great singer Frank Sinatra. So that's very interesting. And then Richie Sambora had this classic look about him. The way he stood and played guitar was incredible. Again, both John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora, incredible musicians and wonderful to look back. Now, uh, Richie Sambora was married to Heather Locklear for a long time. They have a child together. So the two of them look great to this day. And um, I love to put them at the beginning of my list. So at number nine, I am putting Bruce Dickinson. Now, Bruce Dickinson was the lead vocalist, actually he's still the lead vocalist for Iron Maiden. So it has a little bit of a cult following, but the man was always good looking. Now, I like to make jokes that Bruce Dickinson is my brother-in-law because I'm Don Dickinson, he's Bruce Dickinson. But, you know, that's not true because his name is spelled D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N and mine is D-I-C-K-E-N-S-O-N. But again, I think it's a fun thing to tell him, oh yeah, Bruce Dickens and my brother-in-law. So he was with Iron Maiden between 1981 and 1993 and then they kind of did their own thing. And then in 1999 to present, still a front man for Iron Maiden. Incredible band, incredible performer. But in addition to his amazing voice and his ability to belt out the vocals to heavy metal music, Bruce Dickinson is talented in so many other ways. At one point, I think he might still be a commercial pilot. I mean, he can pilot a great big airliner. It's amazing. He also has done stuff like uh, fencing. He's a skilled fencer. He has done some production of documentaries and narrated some film. And he at one point had his own radio shows. 
So Bruce Dickinson, an amazing guy, is born in the UK in 1958. He is near the top of my list of most beautiful rock and roll frontmen of all time. Number eight on the list is Mark Slaughter, lead vocals for the band Slaughter. And if you guys remember the late 1980s, um, MTV was just getting started and Slaughter had a couple of really big hits that they had videos on. Remember listening him to Belt Out Fly to the Angels or Up All Night. You couldn't keep your eyes off of the guy. He was absolutely Absolutely beautiful, still beautiful today, but those long, again, wavy locks and his ability to sing and how cute that face was, that kind of had us uh, enchanted for a long time now. Mark Slaughter was born in Las Vegas in 1964, which also makes him still a baby booner and the same age as me, so he is also on my list. Mark Slaughter, lead vocalist of the band Slaughter. So David Coverdale makes my list at number seven. He was born in the UK in 1951 and was lead vocalist for White Snake for many years, starting in about 1978. He was also with Deep Purple. Uh, again, a beautiful man. Remember the videos, the, light the White Snake videos with him on the car and Tawny Katane. Uh, amazing, the long golden wavy locks. I probably figured by now I love the long hair <laughs> that we had on the metal bands of the 80s. He again fit the bill for that. Very good looking, amazing voice. Um, once I went to a White Snake concert, actually I was at several White Snake concerts in the late 1980s, but there was a time where I got front row seats. And I have to say, I did look pretty good in the 1980s and I had gone with a pair of tight jeans and just one of those midriff shirts. You know, I could pull it off back then. I had tight abs. Now it would be pathetic, but I'm standing in the front We with my then husband and Coverdale kept watching me from the stage and he would come up like right before me and he would sing and at one time he winked at me and I'm like, oh my God, David Coverdale winked at me. me. And uh, my husband wasn't too thrilled. At the time I was thinking, oh, I should ditch my husband and go find him backstage, but I didn't do that because of, I had some intelligence and my marriage didn't last that long, but it certainly lasted longer than that night. So David Coverdale, high on my list of hottest rock and roll front men. At number six, I have Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton was born in the UK in 1950, and in the late 1970s, he had the Frampton Comes Alive album that everybody had. Several other albums, too, but the man, the Frampton Comes Alive in the late 1970s. I think it was like 1976. And every kid in the high school was playing that song. Now, this was before um, earbuds and Walkmans, uh, people used to walk around with the boom box. Remember, we'd walk around with it on our shoulder and we'd be blaring out our favorite tunes. And every time between classes, you would hear Frampton belting out something like, do you feel like I do? Or baby, I love your way. But again, very popular, very gorgeous Peter Frampton with long, wavy, golden locks. Uh, nice to look at, funny guy. I remember once seeing him on an episode of The Simpsons. It was hilarious. I don't remember it exactly, but he was at a garage sale of Pink Floyd and he bought the old pig inflatable balloon and he was trying to get it inflated for his concert and he was like getting all frustrated and stuff. So funny um, when Peter Frampton was on The Simpsons, but again, great musician, great voice pleasant to look at and very talented coming in in my countdown at number six. Number five is Jeff Tate. Now, if you don't know Jeff Tate, he was the lead singer for Queensryche. He was born in 1955 in West Germany, but he had American parents. So he was at Queensryche from about 1982 to 2012. And then something happened in 2013 and he kind of had a little falling out with the band and he was kind of ousted. So Jeff Tate, not lead singer for Queensryche anymore. He does a lot of solo stuff, still amazingly beautiful, and it's hard to think about Queensryche without thinking Jeff Tate. But I remember seeing him on video back in the day. I had Operation Mike Crime and Empire on CD. This was the very early days of CD. And also VHS. This was actually before um, DVD players. They had a compilation of videos from Operation Mind Crime and Empire. And I had moved up to go to Northern Arizona University. So I'm living alone in a cabin in the woods. But I had that video compilation of Jeff Tate belting it out to like Operation Mind Crime or Jet City Woman, Empire, Silent Lucidity. Beautiful. I mean, the face on that guy is very unique. Beautiful hair, but his voice and the inflection when he sings, just incredible. Mesmerized by Jeff Tate in the 1990s, and he is still gorgeous today. 
Now at number four, I have another two for one special. And again, both these guys deserve their own place on my countdown, but because we got to watch them play and interact together on stage at the same time. I mean, what a beauty show that used to be, watching Jimmy Page and Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin on stage. Amazing. Now, Jimmy Page was born in the UK in 1944 and is perhaps the best lead guitarist or the best guitarist of all time. And if you would watch him on stage with that guitar, the beautiful dark curly hair and how he is massaging that double neck guitar, making sounds come out that you didn't think were humanly possible to create from an instrument. The look on his face, he's so intense, he's so into it, and he is so drop dead gorgeous. And then beside him is Robert Plant. Now Robert Plant was born also in the UK in about 1948, so he's only a couple years younger than Jimmy. But oh my God, the voice of Robert Plant, I mean, nothing thing is like that. Not to mention the eye candy of the man. I mean, he would be on stage and he'd have these sweaty locks of blonde hair and this the face and the expression, the voice, the tightest pants that a human being could possibly get themselves into. And he would have his shirt all unbuttoned, nice amount of hair. Back when men actually had hair on their chest, it was awesome. He'd be glistening from the sweat, singing, belting it out. Stuff like even Stairway to Heaven, perhaps the most overplayed song of all time. But just to watch the two of them belt that out was in crazy. Um, you would also hear him play like 10 Years Gone, Whole Lot of Love, um, Hot Dog, that's one of my favorite, but just listening to the two of them and watching them play on stage while they were with Led Zeppelin was amazing. Now, in addition to Zeppelin, both of them had careers outside of Zeppelin. Um, Jimmy Page was originally with the Yardbirds and he also did some other band work like with the Firm, remember that song, Radioactive? He did the stint Coverdale Page for a while, and they were with the band The Honey Drippers. So Robert um, Plant and Jimmy Page. Now Robert Plant, outside of Zeppelin, did a few things on his own, including The Honey Drippers, but he had an amazing, and still has an amazing solo career as Robert Plant, where he continues to sing. Uh, I've seen him in interviews. He's still gorgeous. Jimmy Page is still gorgeous. The two of them, I could watch them today and probably still be as memorized as I was when they were together with Ze Led Zeppelin. Now, at number three, I'm putting Steve Perry of Journey. Now, Steve Perry, probably really not as gorgeous as Robert Plant or Jimmy Page, but because when I was in high school, I was so hot in love for him. I had every single poster that was ever created on Journey of him plastered to my bedroom wall. Uh, my dad thought I was crazy. I saw them in concert several times. Probably the first time I heard Steve Perry sing was Love and Touch and Squeeze and wow, what an amazing job he did with that one. Now, Wikipedia says he was born in 1949, but I don't think so because I remember when I was so uh, mesmerized by him that he was born in January 19. 1953 because it's like, oh, he's 11 years older than me, you know, oh, but uh, gorgeous. He had the beautiful face, the amazing voice, the long black hair and the way he had expressions as he was singing. Amazing, hard to find somebody as talented of a voice as Steve Perry and as beautiful at the same time. So he is very high at the top of my list. Okay, at number two, I am putting Roger Daltrey of The Who. Now, Roger Daltrey was born in the UK in March of 1944, and that makes him a Pisces, which is awesome. He is an amazing vocalist, lead vocalist for The Who, which was probably between 1968 and about 1982. Of course, Roger Daltrey did some stuff on his own as well, and then he's been touring a few times times with The Who. Now, I saw The Who together. Uh, I probably didn't see them except for this one time, and it was at the last tour where John Entwistle was still alive and toured with them. It was an amazing show. I was disappointed that I hadn't seen them in the past, but Roger Daltrey, he was amazing. I mean, he could do a ballad like Behind Blue Eyes, or then he could 
belted out and that raspy rock and roll bad boy sound and who are you and the fact that he was just trapped dead gorgeous I mean again the beautiful face the beautiful blue eyes the beautiful blonde curly locks and him strutting around upstage doing this with the microphone and the tight tight pants and the open shirts wow I mean he was amazing to look at I still like looking at him today I think he looks fantastic but the other thing about Roger Daltrey which is so fascinating is he is a, an intelligent guy very observant of the things going around him I have seen him do a couple of interviews I saw him once on Top Gear it was hilarious and a couple of other interviews that he really knows what's going on and he's the type to not get fooled again so again Roger Daltrey beautiful man amazing singer uh, still looking hot today and he is at the very top of my list of the hottest rock and roll front men of all time so now here we are at number one and I have selected because this is the mood I'm in today this could change tomorrow but I put Rick Emmett of Triumph in my number one position now Rick Emmett so Rick Emmett was born in Toronto, Canada in 1953. He is not only an amazing vocalist, but that man can play guitar. The face, though, he was just a gorgeous man. And he's still good looking today. He's pretty gorgeous today. But I remember him, him in those videos from the US Festival back in the early 1980s. I believe it was 1982, where here he's on upstage and he's got, which is a ridiculous outfit when you think about it today. But in 1982, he had that red spandex tight jumpsuit on and he's on stage with the beautiful long blonde hair and he's jamming out to that double neck guitar blasting out the amazing voice. I mean, what an amazing voice that man has and what an ability to play guitar. I could just be memorized watching him for hours. I'll go back to YouTube and watch some of those old videos of Lay It On The Line. That's probably my favorite to watch him perform or Hold On or Fight The Good Fight. Amazing. Now, uh, he was with the band Triumph for many years from about 1975 to 1988. He kind of started doing other things after 1988, but he's still very active. Now, I've seen Rick Emmett in some interviews in recent years. He still looks amazing, still very intelligent. I have seen him do uh, rock and roll guitar uh, lessons to kids what it looks like so there is also a documentary I came across for Triumph that was released a couple of years ago that I didn't know existed until I saw it today in my research so I'm gonna go and look at that and I'm gonna download that documentary for this weekend so I am putting Rick Emmett again one of my favorites the man is beautiful the man is talented and he's intelligent all those things rolled into one and still him in his 70s he looks beautiful and amazing today so that's it so i hope you enjoyed the countdown of the top 10 hottest rock stars of all time baby boomer edition living legends my name is dawn dickinson the channel is dawn dickinson reflections and insights for life over 55 i hope you enjoyed the video i'm going to do a dead guy edition in a future video so if you like this type of content, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button that helps other people find this type of information. And I put out videos every single week, just like this one. So if you like the video, I hope to see you back here in my next video next week.